How's it going everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video I'll answer one of your most common questions and that is what's the difference between using pre-ferment and long bulk fermentation at room temperature? So let's go to the kitchen and have a closer look. So these are the two breads that we're going to compare side by side. The one on the left is a straight through dough meaning that all its ingredients were mixed from the get-go and fermented for more than 12 hours. The one on the right was made with a pre-ferment. Only a portion of the total ingredients were mixed and fermented for a longer time. Both breads took around the same time to make. The results were quite different and surprising. So let's just quickly run through the ingredients. Both breads contain the same amount of flour, water, salt. The only difference is the amount of yeast they will use. This will be the straight through dough with only half a gram of yeast, which is 0.2 of a percent. Now the bread made with pre-ferment is going to have 3 grams of yeast which is a pretty standard amount at 1.2%. The pre-ferment itself on the other hand will only contain 0.1% of yeast. And to make the pre-ferment we'll take some of the flour, some of the water and a pinch of yeast from the main dough. And we'll ferment it separately before mixing with all the other ingredients. But if you're watching this video you probably already know that. There are so many variables when you're making bread. I chose the specific amount of ingredients and temperatures because I wanted to compare these breads side by side and I wanted them to rise more or less at the same time. So saying that, this is not a recipe video. If you want recipes, there's about 150 of them on my channel. And that's why I'm not going to talk you through the process here. But instead, while I'm making these two doughs, I'm going to talk about what I think you should consider when choosing either method for your bread. And first and foremost, in my opinion, is flavor. The longer you ferment your dough, the more acidic it will get. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's up for you to decide what you like. My point is that when using a pre-ferment, you only ferment a portion of the total flour. So once you mix through all the other ingredients, it kind of dilutes the flavor. Fermenting all the flour in the straight through dough on the other hand will make all the flour more acidic. But that is by no means a bad thing. I quite enjoy bread like that. Second thing to consider is texture. The longer your dough ferments, the more chewy your bread will be. And the crust gets thicker as well. So if you don't like that, then perhaps using pre-ferment is the way to go. I sometimes enjoy a bit of a bite to my bread, but that can also be achieved with just a pre-ferment. Number three on my list is gluten. The longer a dough ferments, the more gluten gets broken down, until it turns into a pre-ferment itself. And that is why it could be risky to ferment all the flour at room temperature. But you can of course control this by controlling the temperature properly. Using a pre-ferment on the other hand can actually help with gluten development, and it can help reduce final mixing time and we will clearly see the result of this later on. Now number four thing to consider in my opinion is hydration. Generally high hydration doughs and high hydration pre will arise more rapidly, or actively I should say. Of course correct temperature control can keep this in check, but a higher hydration will also result in a looser dough, and the fact that it's fermenting for so long will make it even looser still, so you may need to perform some folds during bulk fermentation. And this kind of takes away from the convenience of fermenting your dough for a long time at room temperature. And convenience will be the next point that we talk about. But before that, let me just explain what we've done here so far. I have made the pre-ferment and the dough. They are both at the same temperature. The dough technically contains twice the amount of yeast, but it also contains salt. So they will ferment more or less at the same rate. We'll leave this proof overnight for around 10 to 12 hours, which is what I would normally do. Then I'll continue by pre-shaping the straight through dough then resting it, giving it a final shape, then proofing and baking. The pre-ferment will be mixed with all the other ingredients. Then fermented, folded, shaped before the final proofing and baking. And here's the convenience factor. The straight through dough takes a lot less steps to make, but it must be shaped and proofed right now basically. The pre-ferment on the other hand, let's say if I don't have time to make my bread yet, that could go in the fridge and stay there for up to a day. Because we're not relying on it to leaven our dough, we can use it later on, but the straight through dough will run out of steam and over ferment if we left it for much longer. Here's what I mentioned about the gluten earlier. This dough is pretty stretchy and it's only at 60% hydration, so it definitely requires a pre-shaping step. We need to build back some tension in it so it doesn't spread out too much when baking. And this is partly because the fermentation breaks down the gluten, but also because of volatilization. It makes your dough more extensible and less elastic. Now if you were to run into a situation that I mentioned earlier, when you're not ready to bake yet, but your pre-ferment is ready, then when you pop it in the fridge to slow down fermentation and get back to it later, consider temperature control. Because it will bring down final dough temperature if you don't adjust your water temperature. 
I do have a separate video about this in the principles of baking playlist, so check it out if you're not sure. And you'll find quite a few interesting videos there that may help you out. I've done quite a few side-by-side -side comparisons like this. People seem to like them. I know I've learned a lot along the way. And don't forget to read the written article on my website, link down below. You'll find the exact ingredients I used in this video there. Right, so we spoke about gluten earlier, and I pre-shaped the straight through dough that's resting at the moment. And I mentioned I'm going to fold the dough with a pre-ferment during bulk fermentation. So folding is the next thing that we're going to talk about. This point ties into the convenience, hydration, and also temperature control. Fermenting a large piece of dough, which internally may be at a different temperature than your kitchen, that will certainly require some folds during bulk fermentation, at least initially, because the surface of the dough will cool down or warm up before the middle does, and that can result in an uneven fermentation. So by folding, you can distribute that temperature evenly throughout the dough. And this is a fact not only for straight through doughs that have been fermented for 12 hours, but that also applies for dough that's fermented for a relatively short amount of time. Another reason to fold your dough is to build tension. And this is especially important with no knead bread and high hydration dough. Building tension into the gluten will help the dough rise more vertically instead of spreading out sideways. So if you're making a high hydration dough, you want to ferment it for 12 hours at room temperature, then you're going to have to look after it for a while and give it some folds. And that of course takes away from the convenience factor because you have to be around. The dough I made was only 60% hydration, so it did not require any folds during bulk fermentation. At least a straight through dough. The one with the pre-ferment did get a fold, but that's mostly for degassing. And speaking of degassing, it's also a good idea to do that during bulk fermentation. You don't want too much gas building up in your dough, it might make it more acidic. Now I did not degas the straight through dough this time. And if I were to do it, then the best time would be probably halfway through bulk fermentation. Saying that, after degassing, fermentation accelerates. So we talked through the points that I think you should be considering when choosing either method. Number one, flavor. Do you like your bread stronger, more acidic? Number two, texture. Do you like to have a bit more bite? Do you like your bread really soft? Do you prefer thin and crispy crusts? Or one that is more thick and chewy? Number three, dealing with the gluten. Can you control the temperature reliably? And do you know how to build tension in your dough? Number four, hydration. What kind of bread do you intend to make? Is it going to be wet and loose and require folding? Or are you making low hydration, low maintenance dough? Number five, convenience. How can either one of these methods make your life easier and help you fit baking around your schedule? And number six, folding. And this ties in with all the other points, but still worth considering. And if you know of any other consideration that should be made, let us know down in the comments. And with all this out of the way, Let's get back to the breads that we're making. The straight through dough received the final proof for two hours and is gone in the oven now. The one with the pre-ferment that I'm handling now has gone through two hours bulk fermentation. We're doing the final shaping now and it's gonna get around one hour of final proofing. So both of the breads were already within an hour of each other. And one of the reasons for using pre-ferment is to cut down on bulk fermentation time. Pre-ferment brings flavor and texture. And only five minutes of work the day ahead will save you hours on the next day because after adding all the other ingredients, it ferments quite rapidly. And there we are, both breads have been fully baked. You can see they look slightly different. The straight through one spread out more sideways, it hasn't risen as much vertically. Like I said, gluten. The one with the pre-ferment is a much nicer shape, but also the color is different. The straight through dough is darker. A longer fermentation produces sugars that make the crust go darker in the oven. But of course, it doesn't mean that it's worse or better. It's up for you to decide. So I'll let them both cool down completely. We'll cut them open and see what's inside. The one on the left definitely takes a little bit more effort to cut through. The crust is thicker. The one on the right, it's a bit more crunchy and soft. The texture of the crumb should also be quite different. And having a closer look, you can clearly see. The one on the right is tighter. And of course the one on the left is a little bit looser. I could have skipped the fold during bulk fermentation with the one on the right. That could have made it expand a little bit more. And as for the taste test, the one on the left is not overly acidic. It's just how I like it. It's a little bit chewy and the crust is a little bit thick. The one on the right is far easier to bite through. And the thin and crispy crust is quite pleasant. I enjoy both of them and they both have their place. And as I mentioned earlier, there's thousands of variables. You can use the same recipe and make a hundred different breads. At the end of the day, it's up to you to find out what you like best. And one is not worse or better than the other. They're just different. But wait, there's more. 
Bonus round time. This is a straight through dough that fermented at room temperature for 24 hours. Same amount of flour, water and salt, but a lower temperature, but only 0.008% of yeast. And this is where you have to look out. The slower your yeast ferments the dough, the higher the risk of some nasty stuff starting to grow in your dough. Saying that, this was just fine, but as you can see I took it out of the bowl and stuck to the table, and pieces of it tore off. That is the gluten that has broken down. It tears extremely easily, and you have to handle this dough gently. I mean technically, this will be a defect, but saying that, the bread that came out of this was pretty good. So I've pre-shaped it, because it definitely needs it, we're gonna let it rest, do the final shaping, then the final proofing, and baking. This dough is a lot stickier than the other two, that's why I'm using flour. Of course it's kinda hard to tell on video, but this is really loose. Flattening it out is effortless. As I'm filming this, it's winter in the UK, so my kitchen is quite cool, and the dough had a nice controlled fermentation. I feel that if it was the middle of summer, the dough would definitely over ferment and turn into a puddle, no matter how little yeast I used. So to keep things equal, I've shaped it the same way as the other two, we're gonna proof it the same way, and bake it the same way. By the way, I did not bake the breads in the tin. I only used the tin for support. And they were baked in a preheated cast iron pan with the lid on for half the bake and without the lid for the second half. At 220 degrees Celsius, which is 430 degrees Fahrenheit, fan off. And because this last dough was quite slow and sluggish, the final proof took around three hours. But you could probably place it in a warm area to make it rise more quickly. It's definitely not going to benefit from any more fermentation time. Now let's pop this in the oven, and surprise surprise, I mean this looks good. And it looks better than the other straight through dough. And the color is better. I can't even explain that. Technically this one should have caramelized even more. I was a little bit stumped at this point, I must say. The crust feels nice and thick though, unlike the one with the pre-ferment. But the shape is pretty good, it hasn't spread out as much sideways, so it's risen more vertically. But a slightly tighter shaping, and perhaps an extra fold in the other straight through dough, would have achieved the same result. I'm curious to see the interior, and of course I want to do the all-important taste test. As we can see, it's a lot more bubbly than the other two. I kinda like this. And after taking a bite, I can say, it's pretty chewy, but I like it like that. It'll make a nice hearty, tasty sandwich. But that concludes our experiment, with some pretty surprising results. I never expected this bread to be so good. I'm actually looking forward to making it again. So what do you think of this experiment, and which method do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click right here. To subscribe to the channel, click over here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.